Welcome to a Key Smash Studio tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a telekinesis mechanic in C++. We're going to be using some Raycast code created in an older video, and we're going to adjust it just slightly, and then we'll do a little bit of math to determine the distance the object is from our player, and then move that object in relation to our forward vector. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So the first thing we need to do is actually create an action mapping so that way the player can say when they're wanting to use the telekinesis on an object. And the way we do that is by going up to edit, down to project settings, and then we're going to go to input. We're going to add an action mapping. I'm going to name it telekinesis. And then we're going to bind it to our shift. What I'm going to end up doing is have it whenever I am holding shift and click, that's when I want my player to use the telekinesis. However, if you didn't do the previous duplicate tutorial, you don't necessarily need to have the shift. You could just have it when the player is holding down the left mouse button. But currently, if I just press the left mouse button, it will duplicate the object that I hit. So I need a way to separate those two actions. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and open up our code. I again have this in my character code. However, you don't need a specific character controller. You just need to make sure that whatever code you have has a raycast happening inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and start in our header and we're actually gonna create two functions. The first one is going to be for my shift. So I'm gonna call it switch shift. Again, I'm going to have it be whenever the player holds down a shift and then clicks the left mouse button, they will shoot a raycast to try and telekinesis the hit object. So all this function is going to be doing is switching the value of a bool. And then I'm also going to say if I've just released shift, then go ahead and set the target object that was previously hit now to null. And then the next function is actually going to be where we do our math for our telekinesis. So I'm just going to call it telekinesis. And then we're also going to need a few properties. So again, we're gonna need a Boolean for holding shift. And then we're going to need a target. So this is going to be a actor pointer and I'm gonna call it target. This is going to be the object that was hit by our Raycast. And then I'm also going to need an F vector and I'm gonna call it diff. And this is going to end up being the difference between our impact point on the object and the object's origin. We're going to use this to adjust the distance between our object and our camera. So you can go ahead and save your header and go over to your CPP. And the first thing we're going to do here is go ahead and give a default to that holding shift boolean. And as we won't be holding shift when the game starts, we're going to set it to false. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some stuff to our tick function. Whenever our player is trying to move the object, we want it moved every update. So here what we want to do is check if there is a target. In other words, something has been hit. And if something has been hit, is the player holding shift? In other words, are they trying to move it around the scene? Or is there just a target because someone was duplicating that target? And then inside of this, we're going to call our telekinesis function. And then we're going to go ahead and go down to our inputs and I'm going to add an input component for our bind action of shift. So again, we called this telekinesis in our player settings. I'm going to have it call whenever I press it and I'm binding it to this actor and the function that I'm binding is a my character switch shift. And so what this is saying is whenever this actor presses down on the telekinesis mapped key, which in this case is shift, we're going to call the function switch shift. And now we want to do the same thing, but for whenever we release. So input component, bind action, again, telekinesis. This one is going to be IE released. We're binding it to this actor and the function we're going to be doing is again, switch shift. 
And the reason we're calling this function both on pressed and released is again so that way when I'm holding pressed, I can say my player is wanting to try and move something if they have pressed the left mouse button to raycast. And then once they release that shift button, they're no longer wanting to move something. So we're calling this function again so that way the object will stop moving. So we'll go ahead and create that switch shift function. So void a my character switch shift. And then inside this, what I'm going to do is take our holding shift boolean. I'm going to make it equal to whatever the opposite of the holding shift boolean currently is. So it'll be false before I press it. Once I press it, it will go in and say holding shift is now equal to not false, so therefore it's true. And if I release it, then it'll go back in and say holding shift is equal to not true, therefore false. But this isn't the only thing we wanna do in here. We wanna also set our target to null if we're no longer holding shift. So we're gonna say if we're not holding shift, take our target and set it to null. And this is just saying once we release shift, our player no longer has a target. And now we can go ahead and start working on the adjustments to our ray function and then our telekinesis function. But before we start that, I'm actually going to show you a drawing so that way you can visualize what we're going to be doing. As you can see on the left side, we have a box and its origin is at current location. And on the right side, we have our character, which has a camera, which is represented with the blue oval. And the origin of that camera is going to be our location variable. Our forward vector and our raycast is going to be shot directly out of the camera, which will create an impact point on our box. However, our impact point and the origin of our box are going to be different. And so we need a way to determine the difference between those two points so that way we can add it to our camera's location when we calculate the distance between our camera and the origin of the box. The reason this is needed is because whenever we move the box, we're gonna be moving it by that distance value with relation to our forward vector. So if we didn't get that difference between our impact point and our box's current location, then it would cause an initial jump of location for our target object. So hopefully this visual will help you as we go through the math, kind of understand exactly what we're doing. But now we'll go ahead and go back to our code. And we're going to adjust this start vector inside of our ray to begin with. So like I said, we want it to be coming from our camera. And right now it's coming from the center of our character. So we're just going to get rid of this get actor location. And we're going to do cam get component location. And the reason we're doing this is because we want the F vector to come directly out of our camera, just like our forward vector does, since we're going to be moving our player in relation to our forward vector. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go down to where we're duplicating our actor. And what we want to do here is say if our player is holding shift, then we want to take our target and set it to our hit actor. And we also want to get that difference between the impact point and our target's current location. So if holding shift, then our target is going to equal our hit.getActor and our diff is going to equal our target's get actor location minus the hit's impact point. The reason we're doing the difference portion in our raycast and not our telekinesis function is because we only want to get that difference once and we're going to be calling the telekinesis function every frame. And then we can go ahead for our duplicate and add an else. So that way if our player is not holding shift and is just doing the raycast and hits an object, we're going to duplicate that object instead of moving it. And that's all the adjustments we're going to be doing for our ray function. So now we'll go ahead and create that telekinesis function. So void a my character telekinesis. And we're going to start off by setting a few variables. So we're going to have an f vector for our forward vector. So we'll just call it forward. And it's going to equal our camera's get forward vector. And then we're going to have an f vector for our object's location. So again, that was cur loc. And it's going to be our target get actor location. And 
And then our last variable is going to be another F vector. And this is going to be the location of the camera, which we'll just call loc and camera. And this is going to be get component location. And then what we want to do here is take that location of our camera and add to it the difference between our impact point and our target's origin. So we'll just do loc plus equals diff. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and get the distance between that slightly altered location and the origin of our target. So this is going to be float dist, and it's going to be f vector distance which is just a function that takes in two vectors and gets the distance between them. And the two vectors we'll be taking in are loc, which is the camera location, and cur loc, which is the object's origin. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and move our object. So we're gonna be taking our target. We're going to set the actor's relative location. And what we're going to do in here is have an f vector. And for each of these objects, we wanna take the location. Again, this is the slightly altered location of the camera. We're gonna get the X value of that. To that location, we're going to add our forward vector in the X direction multiplied by the distance. And so what this is doing is saying, I'm going to take my camera's location in the X direction and add to it the distance away that it is but in relation to the forward vector in this specific direction. So if our player is facing forward in the x direction and our camera starts moving to the right, the forward dot x value will decrease from one towards zero. And so the distance in the x direction will become less, whereas the distance in the y direction would become more. So we'll go ahead and do this for our y and z directions as well. So again, loc y plus forward, dot y times distance and loc dot z plus forward dot z times distance. And this is all of the code that we're going to be doing. So we can go ahead and go back to our scene and we can compile. And now that we've finished compiling, I'm going to go ahead and drag in an empty actor. We're going to give it a static mesh component, a static mesh component. And then we're going to just give it a cube. And then we can test and play. And so as you can see, my raycast shoots directly out of my head. And if I hold shift while I do it, I can move the object. And then if I click it from the previous one, it duplicates it. And I can move whichever object I want to. These don't simulate physics, so they just kind of float. But if you wanted to have them simulate physics, then you would need to turn off the physics whenever you've hit them with the raycast. Otherwise, they'll slowly fall to the ground as you're holding it. And then whenever the player releases it, have it simulate physics again. So as a recap, we used a raycast to determine the object that we wanted to move. And then we got the distance the object was from our player and move that object by multiplying the distance away from our forward vector. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Wednesday. And we have our own game called Blast Off on the Google Play Store. We also have an asset pack on the Unity store of kids' toys, and we have a Patreon. So if you would like to support us in any of those ways, I will provide links in the description below for all of them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.